what's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how you can set up a dedicated server for Armor Reforger. It's super simple and really easy to get going. Of course, this isn't going to dive too much into customization. This is just setting up the server so you can play with your friends and you can customize it later on. So to begin, first of all, you'll need to have the server downloaded and installed. For me, I have it on Steam here. Simply search for Armor Reforger and you'll see Armor Reforger Server under the Tools section. You can also click this drop down when you're not searching for things and select Tools to make sure that it's enabled and visible. Once you have it downloaded, you can right click on it, hover over Manage and click Browse Local Files to navigate across to the server files. Inside of here, I'll hit Control Shift and N to create a new folder and I'll call it Configs. I'll open it up. Then I'll right click and create a new text document and assuming you can see .txt at the very end of it, we'll need to select all of it and call it say server or launch or something .bat. I'll call mine server.bat. Then I'll click yes and the icon should then change. If you don't see file name extensions, at the very top on Windows 10, click view and make sure file extensions is enabled. On Windows 11, click the three dots, select options. Head across to view and make sure show hidden files, folders and drives is ticked as well as hide extensions for known file types should be unticked. Then click OK. Now that we have a server.bat, not server.bat.txt, right click this and choose edit to open it up in a program like Notepad. Inside of here, we'll be copying and pasting the first line of text from the description down below. Armory Forger Server hyphen config followed by this and profile Armory Forger Server. We'll hit Control S to save it and we can close this. Then open up the configs folder, right click, new, text document and once again select everything and we'll call this config.json. Hit enter, then click yes and it should change the image once more. Open this up with a text editor the same way we did before. In the description down below you'll find a link to two different Bohemia interactive pages. The first one being server hosting, the wiki page, and the second one is startup parameters. Both of these will be useful for you for heading further into this. However, on the server hosting one, the first link not only does it have the ports that we'll need to forward later on, but it also has a JSON file over here, the configuration file that we'll be creating and editing. I'll copy everything from the first opening bracket all the way down to the end, right click and click copy. Then we'll paste it into the config.json here and follow along with me the mod section over here all the way from the closing bracket to the comma here. I'll be removing these so our server doesn't have any mods at all. Scrolling up, we can customize a few things. First of all, we can change the region here to be whatever you'd like, whatever region you're currently in. We can set an admin password, so I'll say admin123 for example. We can set a server name, I'll call this troubleshoot. You can set a server password, leaving this blank means that there's no password, and we can set a scenario ID. There's a bunch of different scenarios, including ones from the workshop, but if we simply search for scenario ID on this wiki page, you'll see scenario ID and a link to list scenarios here. As you can see, this takes us to the startup parameters wiki page, and right down here we have all of the different scenarios we can enter here, at least for now. After setting and changing everything to be as you please, simply hit Ctrl S to save and we can finally practically launch up our server at this point. So I'll head back and run server.bat. There we go, our server is now booting up. Ah yes, there we go, we have some country codes over here as well. It seems like we need to pick from one of these, so hopefully ZA is good enough for now. Not too sure, but I'll just leave it as is. Don't think it should matter too much. Anyways, our server is now running. So I can fire up Armor Reforger and we should be able to join it in just a moment. Note that we haven't port forwarded or anything like that, so everyone outside of our network isn't able to connect to our server. We'll get to that in just a moment. So I'll head across to multiplayer, direct connect, and inside of here, simply leave it as 127.001.2001 and connect. Then it should search and join the server that's running on our own computer. If we were to tab into it, we should see some information about us connecting, and yes, we do. There we go. Connected to BattleEye Master, meaning BattleEye is working properly, and we're loading into our server right now. Well, I seem to be having issues connecting to it, but it is most definitely running, and you could see that I was connecting to it there. Simply client not responding, maybe I didn't connect fast enough or something like that. Regardless, our server is now running and you shouldn't have issues with it. 
We followed everything as we needed to, following the official wiki guide, so things should be working properly at this point. However, only you on your own computer can connect to the server at this current point. We need to port forward and allow it through our Windows firewall or third-party firewall software for anyone outside of our local network to connect. In the description down below, you'll find a port forwarding guide that should tell you absolutely everything you need to know. Simply input the ports that we'll be going through in just a moment and port forward them to your computer. If you have multiple routers between you and the internet, you'll also find a guide for that as that process is different. Looking back at the wiki page once more, scrolling up, you'll see a bunch of ports over here that we need to port forward and allow through our Windows firewall. UDP 2001, 17777, and 50,000 all the way to 65,000. Some routers won't allow you to port forward so many ports, so preferably, you can open up the configs folder here, open up config.json, and port forward all of the ones that are listed here, being 2001, 17777, and it should probably be enough for people to connect directly to your server, though it may not show up on the list. You may need to port forward the rest of these for that to work properly. So in order to port forward, we'll need to, first of all, allow this through our Windows firewall or third-party antivirus firewall, and of course, port forward them, which guides are in the description down below for. To allow these through our Windows firewall, I'll hit start, type in firewall, and open the Windows Defender firewall. You should see something that looks like this. If you don't, simply click one of the other links in the start bar and we should get in here. Otherwise, you can click Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security and you'll land up in the same place. We'll head to Inbound Rules, click New Rule in the top right, and we'll select Port, Next, UDP, and inside of here we'll enter all of the ports from the web page. So, I'll enter 2001, comma, 17, triple seven, comma, and 50, one, two, three, 50, 000, hyphen, 65, one, two, three, to port forward this entire range here. I'll select everything and copy it, then click next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, and I'll call it, say, Armor Reforger, and I'll click finish. Then we'll head across to Outbound Rules, click New Rule, and once more, port, next, UDP, paste in what we copied earlier, next, allow the connection, next, all three, next, and we'll call it Armor Reforger once more, finish. Now you'll need to port forward all of these ports as we did previously to our computer. Once again, guys are linked in the description down below. At that point, you should be able to join your own server and within a few minutes, it should show up on the server list, allowing your friends to join as well. From there, I would highly recommend checking out and reading the rest of these wiki pages here to understand the rest of the options, how to use mods, etc, etc. There's a ton of things that I haven't covered, but of course, everything else is covered on these pages, once again linked down below. Anyways, that's really about it for this super quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.